everybody, it's Kendra here. Today I'm gonna to show you some of the things that I've been working on just kind of as I work on them. Instead of waiting and having a pocket of time long enough to show you everything in the next month or two, uh, I've done quite a bit of knitting this week. Um, I have a little bit of stitch of stitching done and a bit of cross stitch finishing to do. So those are kind of what we'll be looking at today. But the first thing that I knit is this pattern here. It's a little gnome hat. I picked this up, it's just like a free one from Michaels, but I also found it online under Bernat's Patterns. Um, it uses their Baby Soft yarn, but I actually just used some hand spun that I had and made this hood right here. Now it said it was, it, um, it is only one size. It says it makes a size four. This is pretty big, I found. I made this for my two-year-old and it's definitely longer than I would prefer in this section right here, but it does still work. I tried it on her, it's gonna work, it's so cute. And honestly, I love this style of hood when it comes to winter wear for kids. I think it was two years ago I made this one for her, also out of hand spun. I love how this one turned out, uh, but it's just too small, both the opening and then also the um, neck warmer part. It just comes up, it doesn't quite work. So we've got this bigger one now that will be her next one. Honestly, it is so nice to have the neck warmer built in. It just keeps them so warm. And uh, yeah, this is the one for her. I also have one for my seven-year-old that I made at the same time as this one. And she's still using that one and it's her favorite hat to wear in the winter because it is so warm. The first ones I made were a different pattern. I'll have to link it, but it, uh, I would say I would prefer that over this one. <laughs> um, just the sizing seemed to work out a bit better for me. So that's the first thing that I finished. I blocked it and honestly, it's so nice and soft. I think I mentioned two videos ago that I was feeling like I was getting a lot of hand spun, wasn't sure what to make with it. Some of you gave me some great suggestions in the comments of that video. And so I've just decided let's make some projects. Started with the hood and then I had this other hand spun I had tried to make a hat out of and it was crochet and I just did not have enough of it. So I'd already had it wound up and ready to go. I love the colors on it. And I decided to make this pattern here. It's called the bandana cowl. And it was just in black and white, but maybe you can kind of see. It's just a free pattern by the Pearl Bee by Pearl Soho. I just found it on Ravelry. And in like two nights of knitting, I got it done. I just finished it yesterday, so I haven't blocked it yet, but I thought I'd show you this step and then we'll go block it because I know that this is really gonna change and transform as hand spun always seems to do with a good wash. <laughs> it's kind of holy. I do find sometimes my hand spun is a little denser than other yarns. So by having a looser gauge, it gives me a fabric that I kind of prefer in the end. You can see a lot of that tealy green with some stripes of blue in it. And it just has a garter panel strip at the top and at the triangle bottom here. So I do need to block that out. And actually, why don't we go do that right now? So here is my son's sweater. I did show this in my last making update, but I hadn't blocked it. And I actually washed it like two days ago and I thought it would be more dry, but the arms are super wet. Now I know my son, my son wants to wear this to church tomorrow. So I just have it draped here over a vent and with the arms hanging down since that's the most wet part and I'm gonna see if I can get it dry before then. Now it's just acrylic, so I'm not too worried about laying it flat and shaping it, although I wouldn't mind if the neck came in a little bit with the shaping, but we'll see. Whatever happens, it will be okay. And put the, and put the on. Put those on, yeah. Okay. So my kids are really crafty. They love sitting at the table and making stuff. If you looked around, my littlest is here picking up a puzzle, but we have like a painted pumpkin that's Cinderella's pumpkin carriage and all sorts of crafts. But I happen to know that they are getting some more craft stuff for Christmas. And so I've been encouraging, so I have been encouraging them to finish some of the projects, especially the more like long-term things that they have had on the go that haven't been worked on in a little while. And you know, when it's cold here, we have lots of inside winter craft time. And um, yeah, we're getting back into that. So I just wanna like clear off all the things that they started last year. So first up is a little cross stitch that my oldest daughter did, she's seven. She started it last fall when she was six and has now finished it. It's a little uh, mermaid, as you can see. This was a Bucilla kit that we actually won from other cross-stitch floss tube channel stitch and stuff, so thank you to them. 
they have girls on there around my daughter's age who do stitching and my daughter likes to see what they're up to. So she really enjoyed making this. It had a lot of new things for her. So she has completed one other small cross stitch before this. It was a little butterfly from a kit, uh, but I can tell her skills are far improved over last time. And this was her first time doing back stitch, although I did help her a bit. She did all the outlining, but for some of the inside parts where you're counting the stitches that were already stitched, I did help a bit, but she was really happy to get this done. It came with the little frame and we have already hung it up in her room. All right, so the next project that was completed was, was this Mario. It is made out of perler beads or fusion beads. And uh, my son got a little kit from Michael's that came with all the beads and a simple pattern to follow. Now we only have smaller sections. I think that's mainly what they make. So he had to complete it in sections and then we melted it together. And this is how he turned out in the end. Now, normally when I make these, I don't smush them all the way down. And on the back, I didn't in every section. There's spots where you can see the individual dots. And I usually only do one side, but the pattern actually called for melting both sides. And I thought it might make it a little stronger, which when you have a lot of little pieces, I thought would be a little bit more durable. My son is so good at following directions like Lego patterns or I guess they probably don't call them patterns, Lego instructions and things like that. And this seemed like such a good fit. He Really enjoyed working on it and seeing it come together. You can tell, I think I made some mistakes with the ironing because it's a little bit like wrinkled finished. I just used some parchment paper, but it was hard on such a big piece because once you do one side and you go to iron the other side, it's not like it fits on the bead plates anymore. So I just put it on like a towel. But anyways, this is what he looks like in the end. And yeah, really fun kids craft. All right, the last craft they've been working on is diamond painting. Now we got a quick little kit from the dollar store, I think it was, but they got it through church. They both really loved it, but it was tricky because it didn't show you exactly where to place the diamonds or the jewels or the gems, whatever you call them. So I ordered them these diamond painting kits from AliExpress. They were under $5 each, but we'll try it and see. Um, and they actually just finished, well, the first one's finished. This one my daughter made. See the little unicorn. This one's kind of nice because there's different sized gems. She definitely, actually both of them, got a little bit bogged down on the background where there's so many of the smallest size. So it was nice to have some of the larger ones in there as well. But this one she just completed this week. And then my son is so close, but again, he's on the background and he has mostly the smaller ones left to go. And it's definitely what has slowed him down. It's a little less exciting than getting that character done. And it's just so many small ones. So my kids are five and seven, but really a fun craft for them and something they can pick up. The only issue is keeping track of all of those little gems. So now I'm looking for how to seal them. I know I've seen a few videos on TikTok where I've seen people doing diamond painting where they pour some kind of like sealer on the top, but I just need to look it up and figure out because even though they're stuck, I would be worried just sticking it on the wall like this, that it might not stay stuck forever. So those are the main kids crafts that have been going on here. Well, there's a bunch of other things too, but these are like the long-standing projects that are finally getting wrapped up, which I'm really happy about. And I know that it's only going to make room for more things coming up. All right, that's kind of a weird angle, but I am going to now work on a cross stitch finishing. So I showed you on one of my previous making updates, I had finished this pillow and I had this kind of soft green backing fabric for it. Now I have a lot of that fabric left and I have a little pillow that I want to make with this cross stitch design. Um, and I have some gray pom-pom that I want to use as the edging, but I don't want it to be green. <laughs> So I decided, why don't I try to paint it rather than buying some new piece of fabric. And where are my swatches? I tried a few different colors and also just to see what the texture would be, um, if it would be like really crunchy. And I was actually pretty surprised. It The thicker paint definitely made it a little more stiff, but I think it's gonna work out. It doesn't retain that super soft texture, but as like a decorative pillow, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. So I'm going to go with the black on this. These are my colors. I'm gonna go with the black. I don't need a huge amount done, but I am going to paint a square large enough to make my little pillow with it and just do a thin coat of it. I am just using some crafters acrylic that I have on hand and I'm painting this 
throughout my square. I obviously want to be so careful not to get paint on my stitching. It's a lot of little stitches in there. But I am just going to mark off about how big of a section I need for it. This is looking really bad right now, but the other the little swatch looked really good once it dried. So I'm really holding my breath that it also looks like that. But if it doesn't, it's really not a huge loss. And I will find something else to go on the back of this little pillow. So here I am, this is my stitchy spot. I spent a lot of time in this chair working on my crafty things in my little living room while the kids are playing and we can be talking and doing things, but I can also be working on something. So I have one cross stitch and one knitting project to show you. And I'll show you the knitting first since we've done some of that already. And I'm keeping the theme alive with the hand spun. And I wound up, just hand wound, a ball of hand spun I made probably almost a year ago now with blacks and these tealy greens. Love those colors. And I'm just making a pretty simple cowl. This is what it is looking like so far. I just used the cast on numbers from the bandana cowl I made, but this one's gonna be just straight up with the ribbing at the top and the bottom. It's going pretty quick. I'm just using size eight Chiago needles as my main needle and then smaller for the ribbing, of course. But this is another one. I started knitting these hand spun projects and then thought maybe I should be making some things to give away as gifts. Part of the problem is that I personally don't need a lot of new hand knit things, but it is nice to have them ready as gifts and this one especially it's a merino it's very soft and squishy and it feels really nice <laughs> i'm not sure if this is everyone's color scheme but i decided to knit it up and then it is ready to go at least when the time comes and i'm feeling really in a knitting mood <laughs> again cold outside it's a good time to have a nice warm knitting project on the go so that is the next knitting project that i've been working on this week i just cast this on last night it's going super quick it won't take long i'm just going to knit through my ball and that's how big it will be. Also, excuse me, I did not clean up my stitchy spot. This is just what it looks like. TV remotes, Bible, needles, and current lips. I also have, uh, I don't know if you can see right behind me, my binder full of DMCs that I use for a lot of stitching projects. Now, I showed this last week. I filmed a video on Saturday showing all of my progress and I was just about to start this pattern called Love Grows Here by Autumn Lane Stitchery. And I got started and I made a pretty good progress on it so far this week. This is being stitched on 28 count, I think what they call it, Edinburgh, Edinburgh linen. Um, I just got it at Michael's, it's Charles Craft, I think. And I'm using Selkie threads. All right, sorry about the cuts. I have been trying to charge my camera battery. Anyways, I'm stitching this with Selkie, which is a cotton thread. I mentioned in that video, I got this, um, I think it's five pack from Amazon. Uh, so it is a 12 weight, which Selkie claims is the equivalent of two strands of DMC. Although I've seen a lot of people online say it's more like one and a half. Um, and I'll show you on my project here that this is 28 count that I'm stitching one thread of Selkie over two threads of the cloth and it does have pretty good coverage on it. Now the darkest color here, right in here, I didn't have one in my Selkie pack. And even though they sell Selkie individually on Amazon, they didn't have the color I was looking for. So I decided to use DMC and I'm using 3787. And for that, I am stitching two strands of DMC. Now the DMC, that darkest color does really pop, I would say. But I don't feel like it's a bad thing. Um, it's kind of a focal point. There's this whole tree and leaves in the center. So I think it's going to work out really well. And I'm not disappointed at all with the coverage of one strand of Sulky. Now the only issue I'm kind of having, and I wouldn't even really call it an issue, but right in here you can see I have the lightest color. It's a light green and it is a little bit hard to see. But the thing I like about it is that the designer uses the darkest shade to show the foreground and that lightest shade to show far away. So when it is far away, it is harder to see that light minty kind of green. Uh, but when you're looking at it up close, you can definitely see it and it just gives depth to the picture. 
So, so far I'm really enjoying working on this. Um, I've got the words at the bottom, there's birds in the center, there's lots to do still, but I think I've got a pretty good start for starting it just this week. Once I'm done with section, I go back in and highlight it. I don't think you'd be able to stitch the pattern from this here. Oops. Check it off. Ooh, I missed some. I won't show you the zoom out in case you can see. But with the grayed off pattern, this is the portion that I have stitched so far. So I have just laid it flat here. I'm not pinning or anything. It doesn't matter too much, but I'm just going to let it dry now. So the black has mostly dried and I'm really not too happy with the result. So I guess I'm on to plan B to figure out if I have another fabric that will work for this. has returned. So I'm gonna end this here. I'm gonna keep fiddling with the pillow. I might make those pom-poms shorter. Not totally happy with it. And I think next time I'll show you what this looks like in the end and what it looks like on. I can see it's already drying a lot flatter. So I think it'll be good. All right, thank you for seeing what I'm up to today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.